Hey, what's up guys? We're back with another historic brawl slash commander deck. This one was a little hesitant to share because it's pretty unfair and kind of ruins the game of magic. But before I jump into it, uh, if you guys have enjoyed my videos, please hit the subscribe button. And if you guys want to see another commander, just let me know in the comments below and I'll uh, make a deck around that commander. Uh, today we're playing Velomachus Lorehold, 7 mana 5-5 five, five, Flying Vigilance Haste. Whenever Lorehold attacks, look at the top 7 cards of your library. You may cast an instant or sorcery spell with mana value less than or equal to Lorehold's power uh, from among those without paying its mana cost. And then you can put the rest at the bottom of your library in a random order. And you guys might be thinking, you know, there's probably a lot of 7 mana spells more pow powerful than this card. But the real reason this deck is uh, so unfair is all these land destruction spells. We are running every 4 mana one I could find, as well as Stone Rain, which is probably the most efficient land destruction spell printed in Magic, and the Goblin Rune Blaster, which is a 2 mana, or a 3 mana 2 on haste that you can kick to destroy a non-basic land. So in conjunction with all our 2 mana ramp spells, uh, oftentimes turn 2 you play a Guardian or a Cold Steel Heart, and then on turn three, you can play one of these four mana land destruction spells and just put your behind opponent way too far behind to catch up. And then the rest of the decks is just non-creature spells that um, either wrath the entire board, like Day of Judgment, or are efficient singleton removal spells, like Swords, or stuff like Disenchant to deal with problematic artifacts or enchantments that the opponent will get to resolve sometimes. And then... And that's when we get back to our commander, which lets us recast um, some of our land destruction from the graveyard to even further push the opponent behind. But yeah, if you want to get some quick wins, this could potentially be the deck, because I assume a lot of our opponents are going to concede pretty early as soon as their land starts getting destroyed and they just can't cast their spells. And as always... Uh, I'll put the deck list in my description for you guys to try out on your own. And let's just hop into game one. Alright, game one on the play, which is great. Only two lands, which is not so great. And we're against a mono green deck with a land game plan, game plan, which might be a problem for my land destruction, as they can probably just play more than I can destroy. Uh, they're using Myth Weaver Bok. Its power and toughness is equal to the number of lands they control. Whenever one or more non-token land enter the battlefield under their control, for each of them, conjure a duplicate of it on the battlefield. This ability only triggers once each turn. Yeah, I don't feel so good against this, but if we draw some lands, the Wrath of God might help us come back. And they took one mulligan. Oh, they took a lot of mulligans, so maybe that saves us. Makes me kind of wish I took a mulligan, because I did keep a bit of a risky hand here without any red sources. That would have been... good. I'm actually okay with trading my Sento further elf as it keeps him off mana. And we don't have any land destruction in our hand right now anyways. So yeah, let's resolve our... Essential first draw a card and then mana type this to stop them from. Oh. A little bit of a non game. Did I have fun? Not really. Not really. <laughs> okay. Game two. Great looking hand. But we're on the draw, which is a problem. And this is actually. Yeah, this is game two, not game one. Be because the first game was a little bit of a non-game, and I don't know if I'm going to add it to the video or not, so you guys might not see it. But we're going against Gishad's Sun's Avatar. I think this is a really good commander. Uh, eight mana cost, so maybe our land destruction can slow them down. Vigilance Trample Haste. When uh, Gishad's Sun's Avatar deals combat damage to a player, reveal that many cards from the top of your library. Put any number of dinosaur creatures from among them onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So, yeah, if that thing hits us, it's probably just game over. So let's, uh, let's make sure it doesn't. Uh, turn one, we'll just play our tap land. 
But yeah, being on the play with this hand would be insane. I think this deck is like nuts on the play. Because so we would have been able to um, destroy a land this turn, right? Because last turn we would have had... Yeah, we would have... Maybe? Maybe I'm wrong. But we can still destroy a land on turn 4. Which is really gross. And... Let's get rid of their only red source. So gross. Hopefully I can find some more land destruction. Did not. We have one, we have four, five mana right now. Each other creature you control, that's a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, or beast, gets plus one, plus one, and has vigilance. I think we just play the tome and most likely just draw with it. It's not really a threat, and I don't really care for killing it yet. More land destruction? Nope. Play this on red. One, two, three, four, five, six mana. Next. At seven mana, we could actually starve extinction. So I think it's pass here again. But yeah, they didn't hit a land last turn that destroying their one land probably completely screwed on this game. Yep, it's so gross. They need they need to get rid of this so interactive. I feel bad, but I also I feel so good at the same time. All right, here we go against Atali, the Prime Conqueror. Probably a pretty good commander. Seven mana, seven seven. When Atali enters the battlefield, each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. You may cast any number of spells from among the non-land cards exiled this way, uh, without paying their mana cost. And then for 10 mana, or 9 mana and 2 life, they can flip this into 11-11, trample and destructible, and it deals damage in the form of poison counters instead of regular damage, right? Oh no, it deals regular damage and poison damage, so that's that's a problem. Because a player with 10 or more poison counters loses the game. Nice. But yeah, we got a good hand here. Mindstone into Demolish is pretty gross. But we are on the draw, so maybe they'll get uh, they'll get to their seven mana before I can get to my seven mana. Turn one, foiled passage, fabled passage. Sorry. Turn two signet on the play. Honestly, I think I just abraded that. Yeah. Slow them down as much as I can. Even though that does mean we can't demolish next turn, but this is effectively killing a mana source, which is similar to destroying a land anyways. So we can actually play the Mind Stone and keep open the Reprieve, which is really great. Which lets us uh, return a spell to its owner's hand, and then we draw a card. So yes, let's do that. Slow them down as much as we can. And if they don't have a lad next turn, they might not have a play to make. But I can also just Chandra. <laughs> and then next turn, we can cast our Velomachus if they don't really have much. I think I like that more. Can't really People do anything with the three mass, so let's exile the top track. part of our library. Yep. You're going down. Can't cast that. Goodbye. Goodbye forever. <laughs> well they should have a pretty tough time killing a five um, loyalty planeswalker here, yeah. The next turn we can slam the Velomachus with the plus one on Chandra. This will be easy. 
But they can probably cast the Atali next turn, which is also a huge problem. I guess I destroy a land and hope that they don't have a land in their hand. Okay. Don't cast it. The halfling, them having a one mana ramp was really good last turn because if they only played the simulacum, they uh, would have no chances at casting the Atali, right? And I'm not blocking here because they did to draw a card. And if they don't have a land in their hand, they might find one, so. That's pretty good for us that they didn't have a land there. And now we can demolish another one of their lands. And it probably is game over after that. So let's attack first. Bolt their halfling. So they have some sort of protection for it. You got a fight spell, eh? To draw a card. Yep. Fine. And make a treasure. But this demolish will make sure they still can't cast the Atali. And... <laughs> yeah, we got a plus and cast a Fable. It's gross. This deck is gross, but... It does feel pretty good to win, guys. No, I don't have fun. Never have fun. Okay, I think this is game four, and we have succeeded so far in making every player concede early. Which is, um... Honestly, it's pretty good if you're trying to just uh, grind some gold up to get some matches in quicker. Definitely bolt the bird. Always bolt the bird. At least that's what I've been told. But let's see if we can continue the streak of uh, ruining people's days. And the Breath of Miletus is great here as it will make sure we hit our fourth land, which will let our Fabled Passage. Or hit our third land, which will let our Fabled Passage enter untapped. Yeah, I think I just want to kill that though. But can I? Do I have a way? Let them create two map tokens. Yeah, I think that's too, um... Oh, lost to Legend. Okay, that's... <laughs> I forgot that thing was Legendary. Okay. Discard... Disregard what I said. I was reading Get Lost, and I cast Lost to Legend, which was actually the better play. I didn't even know this was in my hand. One ring. Yeah, this is uh, absolutely busted. I forgot this card exists because it's banned everywhere. The One Ring, indestructible. When the One Ring enters battlefield, if you cast it, you gain protection from everything until your next turn. At the beginning of your upkeep, lose one life for each burn encounter on the ring. And for one mana, they can put a burn ring on. They can put a burn encounter on the ring and draw a card for each burn encounter on it. Indestructible, so I cannot destroy it. But we still can destroy their land, so that is the play here. However, that is going to keep them in the game. <laughs> Just kidding. Honestly, they would have been in a fine spot if they just kept drawing some cards with the ring, because we had no more land in our hand. And unless we were top decking a bunch of land, it's going to be pretty difficult for us to win that game. But... You know, when your land gets destroyed, it just feels so bad that you just want to leave. You're like, I don't want to play anymore. That's why I was like, I don't know if I should be uh, making a video and spreading this deck to more people.
I've always been told to spread love and not hate, but here we are spreading hate because I know everyone's going to hate me after I destroy their lands. But I think we're four for four on making people concede early. Let's see if we can keep the streak going against Davril, Rogue, Shadow Mage. Uh, three mana, three loyalty planeswalker, minus one target player discards a card. And at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if the. Uh, at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if that player has one or fewer cards in their hands, this deals two damage to them. Um. Excuse me? Turn one of Gix? Am I the one that's going to be conceding early this game? Well. Does this hit? Nope. Only white or blue. <laughs> Horrible hole? Nope. Two or less mana. Protection. I can make a, I can make a couple of uh, blockers here, which is good. To stop them from drawing some extra cards. Instead of playing the Guardian Idol. And here comes the Shadow Mage. Oh no, they're getting a they're getting a little aggro. I will just chump chump to stop them from drawing <laughs> any number of cards. Um Still don't have a way to deal with the Gix. So let's just play the Guardian Idol and hold up the Reprieve. Actually, don't think it's over yet. We just need to find some kind of removal. But yeah, they're gonna have some real good card advantage on us now. Excuse me, I can't. I couldn't reprieve that. No. Don't bother me, or else. I'm probably missing something. This is enter tapped. That's what I'm missing. In that case, we had no chance <laughs> at any point in this game. And I will be uh, conceding pretty soon here, it seems like. But again, this deck has so many rats that I still feel like I can keep <laughs> I can keep going. First iron out the details. It's an alchemy card. I've never seen this because I don't play with alchemy cards except Except for Brawl now. What? Okay, so they get a positive and a negative. That's what the minus two is. I guess we can't really see what they chose or what they what options they had. We get it. You you like drawing cards, all right? Wow. <laughs> I'm over here all mad, even though I'm destroying <laughs> people's land. Uh, get rid of the portable hole, I guess. Reprieve. Got him. Got him. Do you concede? No? That's so weird. All my other opponents have conceded when I play cards. I'm just gonna play this real fast. This game is most likely over, so I don't want to waste too much time here. But I feel like if we draw our farewell, we have a small chance of staying in the game. Even though they have 100 cards in their hand. You know what? Even if we draw a farewell, we're gonna lose because they probably have removal for the Velomachus. So I will be the one conceding here. First, Davriel. You got me. Honestly, turn one kicks. You got me. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I looked away reading the card and I looked back and I'm like, how does this guy have this Gix on the board on turn one? Turn one. And then I saw the Dark Ritual in the graveyard. Let's get to the next match. All right. On the play. If we draw any land destruction card, this hand is nuts. So let's keep it because we got turn two cold steel heart on the play. Oh, but they have turn one Utopias, bro. That's also really, really good. Oh, if we draw a land destruction spell next turn, we get to blow up their forest and their Utopias, bro. Okay, come on, game. 
Yeah, this because this only hits um, non-basic land, so we can't ruin blast next turn. Ooh, we can ruin blast that, though, which is nice. No, they sacrificed their one basic. Ah, dang it! Dang it! We do not get to live the dream. That's okay, though. <laughs> it's not okay. We're screwed. <laughs> Because now they get to duplicate every land. I guess it didn't go over their commander. The uh, Myth Weaver Hawk, Cat Shaman, is to power and toughness equal to the number of lands they control. And whenever one or more non token lands enters the battlefield under your control, for each of them, conjure a duplicate of it onto the battlefield. This ability only triggers once each turn. So, yeah, they played this, played a forest, and duplicated the forest. So they got two for the cost of one. And we're real far behind. White or blue, dang it. This broad has been a real letdown. Alright, so what can we do to come back? Probably not much, because we're not going to be able to destroy enough lands anymore. So let's start with Mirror Breaker, I guess. Because we'll pitch our entire hand. Except for the Invoke Calamity and hope to hit <laughs> instance of sorceries we can cast. None of this feels real good, so let's just cast the Fable of the Mirror Breaker and make a 2 2 Shaman that can make us some treasure. I thought I had a great start, but god dang, their opening is nuts. Especially because they don't have any um, non-basics to destroy. Oh, I should have drawn in response. Uh oh, Ulamog, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, what? we'll let them Ulamog us next turn. I deserve it. I guess it doesn't matter because we would have drawn the card under the cult here, whether I activated this in response or not. So we could pitch a couple things here. No removal. I think we kind of got to dig for some removal. Three, four, five of six mana if I attack. So I'm still one off. Cast overall. Yeah, so we got to dig for some removal spell. Stop them from playing a land. Plus Ulamog. I guess that stops them from playing Ulamog for a turn. A bug. Boom. And let's replay the Gold Steel Heart. On white. Aha, take that, two damage. <laughs> no. So they Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven mana? Dang it, can they cast Ulamog? Yes, I can. Alright, alright. See, this deck isn't busted. It's just um, really demoralizing when you go up against it and, uh, <laughs> and they exile your lands. All right, let's scoop this one up. Pretty insane start from the opponent, though. Gotta give them, give it up for them. Actually, can't. Yeah, no, they exile their land. It's like, can we cast lower hold for fun? But we cannot. 
on to the next. Right, we are up against the Soul of Wind Grace. Another play more lands deck. Uh, whenever Soul of Wind Grace enters the battlefield or attacks, you may put a land card from your graveyard onto the battlefield. And then for green mana, they can discard a land. You gain three life. For one and a red, discard a land, draw a card. And for two and a black, discard a card. Soul of Wind Grace gains indestructible until end of turn and tap it. Our opening hand. It's okay. I think we keep it because we can scry for some lands. And the sword can uh, deal with some early ramp or stuff. But it's also absolutely busted. Exile target creature for one mana. No! <laughs> don't look. Don't look. Don't look at my land destruction. I guess I can actually get some lands back with this, so maybe destroying lands isn't the worst for them. No! My sword. But we did draw a guardian, which will let us ramp a little bit. So let the line destruction begin. Is Elsbeth Conquers Death good enough? Nah. Here we are being absolutely disgusting once again. Is this enough to make the opponent concede? Nope, they're still in it. But to be honest, we don't have uh, much more to do, so... Fight finished before brunch. Right, they're actually no, can quit not at, at the time. worst position. But we can destroy another land. Yeah. And we can scry to once again. Land and land. Is that good enough? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I think two lands is fine here. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. <laughs> I forgot I could play that as a land, so I didn't only need to keep one of those lands. But yeah, easy game. That was very interactive, very fun, engaging game of magic. All right, let's get another one. All right, we're playing against Narset, the Enlightened Exile. Uh, creatures you control have Prowlers. Whenever Narset attacks, exile target, non-creature, non-land card with mana, mana value less than a Narset's power from the graveyard and copy it. You may cast a copy without paying its mana cost. And our hand is pretty weak. But we do have a cheap way to kill the Narset, but I'm assuming they're going to play it and give it haste, so we might not have a chance to respond, so we'll mulligan there. Seems a bit better, we can name Narset with the Curse of Silence right off the bat, but we definitely need some lands off the top of this hand. I feel like this deck is meant for people who actually don't like playing Magic with other people and actually like playing a single player game. Like, oh, you want to do something? Uh, no. No, you can't, because uh, your land is gone. Oops. Oops. My bad. Let me just pick that up and tear it in half for you. You won't be needing this. Ooh, the Triumph. Don't ramp. Don't play a two-mana artifact that ramps you. What did I just say? I told you not. So unfair, guys. So unfair. Alright, let's get rid of the Ornithopter. 
don't want the opponent ramping on us. The opponent. The opponent. Okay, so we can pay both the curse and the bank buster. Start with the curse and see what they do. So make sure to pick the right Narset. An enlightened exile. For those of you that don't know, Bank Buster enters with three counters, and for two mana, I can remove a counter to draw a card. And then if there's no counters, I get a treasure and a 1 1 pilot, which can crew as if a power were too higher. And it's also just a 4 4 vehicle with crew 3. Um, hmm. I think I still want to destroy the Mana Ramper over the Pyromancer here. And then I can draw a card with the Bank Buster. Where are my cheap ramp? Where is my cheap ramp? This is unfair. Okay, decided to keep that card on top. Interest about you reveal a mountain or plains from your hand if you don't hit enters tapped. So it's definitely entering tapped. And play a four mana spell and keep open bank buster. They likely have a counter. The question is, do I want to play the torch or the shift? Or do I just pass? What if I pass and they have a, a, a card draw spell that's also not great for us? I didn't, I didn't know I had to think with this deck. I thought I was just gonna pull up their lands and watch them concede. I think I'm just gonna draw here. Okay, did not play anything which is good maybe they got a protection spell and they're waiting for one more mana so they can play the dark side and keep open dang it it's another land that enters tapped five mana i mean they didn't do anything last turn so i'm just gonna draw again Nice, untapped line is good. And they probably have to counter this. Their Pyromancer can't block. Yep. Could this be a double vision game? This card is very fun, and I would love to double my instants and sorceries. But I think if I copy a card like this, where you choose two of the options, it just doesn't let you re-choose the options again. You just copy whatever options you chose in the first place, if that makes sense. One, two, three, four, five, six mana. They're passing, they probably have a counter spell. Three, four, five, six, seven mana. What do I want them to counter? Okay. 
Yeah, this is the least card I care about. I could play the Chandra and hope they don't have a cheap counter and then a reprieve. But I might want to... Yeah, let's just play Chandra and try to reprieve their Narset. The other option that I was, yeah, just playing there and back again and letting them counter this. Because I don't care for it much. Is this about to flip as well? Yep, they can flip their search this turn. And they can pay three mana to start looking for instants and sorceries on the top four cards of their library. I think we're losing. So I really want to resolve this double vision. And they only have one card in their hand. Okay. So that's really good. Confidence going up. So we have a double vision on the board and they won't be able to counter both the copy and the initial spell each turn. Burn down the house. One, two, three, four, five. They're making three one ones with haste. Yeah, I think that's worth reprieving here. I don't want to make a copy, I think. <laughs> so I can actually crew the bank buster here to block. So let's see if they forget. They did not. Do I just slam? Uh, I think Lorehill Command's really good here. I can actually attack him for a lot of damage, but probably just want to sacrifice a permanent and draw cards and make a bunch of 2-2s. Two Honestly, I forgot I had Cursed the Dark Side and it cost 6 mana right now. <laughs> I thought it was its original cost. Yeah, sacrifice the land. And... Let's crew. And just kill their board here. They do get to search for Ascanta, so they probably find some kind of board wipe of their own. Is Mari Command. Maybe he has instant sorcery, create a 2-2. Two, two. Create a 2-2 two, two zombie with decay at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control three or more creatures, tokens, you may transform this. And then creature tokens you control lose all power, lose all abilities, and have a base power of 3-3. Three, three. Sorry, I have a base power and toughness of 3-3. Three, three. Alright, alright, alright. Um, yeah, they got the burn down the house. Still in their hand. But yeah, let's just slam this. They 
did not. In response, um, kill on him at 3 2, so we get to get in for a bunch of damage here potentially. That makes sense. Yeah, they're still in this. They get to destroy, kill a creature, and destroy our bank buster. That, um, search is keeping them in this game. We have three treasures. Don't think any of these are still worth using. Storm, okay. <laughs> Little late for that. And we don't have any great instance of sorceries. I hope they didn't get a counter off the brainstorm. <laughs> yeah, they, um, yeah, we got them. Nice, nice. That was a long game. But uh, Velmakas actually won us there instead of our land destruction. I guess the opponent forgot we had four mana open to pay for both make disappears. We take those. Let's get one more game. The last one was a little long, and I gotta eat. I gotta eat dinner before I go to bed. So one more game against a against the first liver, which is a sick card, five color card, cascade. It's the liver spells you control have cascade. And uh, for those that don't know, whenever you cast, so what cat? For those who don't know what Cascade is, when you cast a spell, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card that costs less. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost, if its mana cost is less than this spell's, and then put the rest of the exiled cards on the bottom of your library. Basically, you play this, you hit a sliver, which lets you cast another sliver, and so on and so on until you get to a mana value that's too low. We have Guardian Idol, so I'll keep this hand, and we have Wrath of God to catch up if they play a bunch of creatures. I don't know how many slivers there are, though, so... Do not know how good this commander is, but it does give you access to all five colors, so they might have some pretty cool stuff in there. Quintorius. Oops. Decide if you want to keep your hand or not. Okay, I don't. I think the opponent might be away from the keyboard. AFK, Mr. Saucy, PhD, Doctor Mr. Saucy. Oh, he's back. Okay, okay. We do have a game. That would have been nicer last turn, because I kind of just want to pay the Guardian this turn. I guess because I don't... No, I think I still want to play the Guardian Idol. Even if I don't have a 4 mana play next turn. But yeah, I was thinking about playing the Sentinel because they might want to play their own 2-mana rock. 2-mana mana rock. But god, the opponent's taking very, very long. I wanted my last game to be a little shorter, please. That's a good disenchant target.
and we'll just play out our Sentinel. Making it harder for them to cast not creature spells. Because it lets us draw a card. Nice. Don't have a way to blow that up though, do I? We have one, two, three, four, five mana. Very awkward. As we actually don't have anything good to do. I guess I get in for some damage here. Yeah, if we had drawn something that turn I feel great about our position, but here he comes! The first sliver- Oh no, they had a tap land! And we do a destroy an artifact so they might not be able to cast the first sliver next turn. Probably should have got in for two more damage there, but... <laughs> yep, they missed the land. I'm so sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> we evil. We evil around here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Destroy another land. Yep. Well, now you can see what this deck, how brutal this deck really is. I think the last game was a good summary of what this deck is designed to do. I'm sorry if you guys see more of this deck <laughs> now that you know that it exists. Uh, but yeah, of course, the deck list is in the description. If you enjoyed my video, please the subscribe but button. And let me know if you want to see another commander deck. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. I need to learn how to do outros.